Wisconsin. Its soil, topography, and climate combine to create the perfect terroir for producing the world's best milk. So it's no surprise that over 1,200 of the world's greatest cheesemakers call it home. Well, what'd you know? Here are five of the all-time greats right now. But how do they create all those award-winning masterpieces of complex flavor and texture celebrated the world over? Let's explore the five steps of cheesemaking and learn how to make the greatest cheese in the world. Great cheese starts with one essential ingredient. It's all about the milk. The milk. The milk! So it's no surprise that Wisconsin, America's Dairyland, is home to mind-blowing varieties of award-winning cheeses. Once the farm fresh milk arrives at Henning's Wisconsin Cheese in Keele, Wisconsin, it's lab tested for freshness, safety, and to ensure no antibiotics are present. Then, master cheesemaker Carrie Henning has it swiftly pasteurized at 161 degrees for 15 seconds. After pasteurization, the fat content of the milk is optimized for the particular cheese it's being used to create. Cheesemakers call this step standardization. It takes about 10 pounds of milk to make one pound of cheese. What might be real subtle when you're drinking the milk gets to be concentrated 10 times when we're making cheese. It's a good thing we're in Wisconsin, where we produce the finest milk in the world. It's two in the morning at Edelweiss Creamery in Monticello, Wisconsin. Master cheesemaker Bruce Workman is hard at work adding a starter culture of bacteria to the milk marking the beginning of its much-anticipated transformation. If I want a really sweet cheese, or if I want something that's a little bitter, I can make the cheese a little bitter by changing the starter cultures to it. The culture turns the milk's lactose, or milk sugars, into lactic acid. Then, Bruce's son Ben adds the enzyme rennet, kick-starting the coagulation of the milk. Coagulation is simply the thickening of milk proteins. But to a cheesemaker, it represents one of cheese making's most beautiful and dramatic dances. Like a waltz. A foxtrot. Hop and lock. Within 30 minutes to two hours, the milk solids have bound together to form an extraordinarily soft and pillowy mass. This, at last, is the glorious curd. Curd is the word. The word that I heard. Awesome. At Car Valley Cheese Company in Laval, Wisconsin, master cheesemaker Sid Cook and his crew are hard at work cutting the curd. The smaller the curd, the more whey is released and the harder the cheese will be. After cutting, the cheesemakers often cook the curd while draining the whey. When we're doing the cheddaring process, we're cutting the curd by hand with knives. Then, the mats of curd are flipped and stacked over and over. Harder, drier cheeses, like Parmesan, are cut into smaller curds, sometimes as small as a grain of rice, while softer cheeses, such as fresh mozzarella, are cut into larger, walnut-sized curds. At Widmer's Cheese Cellars in Theresa, Wisconsin, master cheesemaker Joe Widmer and his crew perform the thousands of years old tradition of salting and forming the cooked curd. Salt is incorporated in various ways, sprinkled directly into the curd, added to the surface of the cheese, or in the brine that some cheeses are steeped in. Salt enhances flavor, develops texture, helps to draw moisture from the cheese, and is also a natural preservative. At this stage, Wisconsin cheesemakers add other delicious things to their cheeses. Things like herbs. Fenachrik. Caraway. Tequila. Secret ingredients. The harder a cheese is pressed into its form, the more whey is released and the firmer it will ultimately be. This is when a good deal of the curd knitting, the bonding of the cheese curds, occurs. With Widmer's Wisconsin Brick Cheese, actual bricks are used to press the cheese. Well, brick cheese was invented in Wisconsin 
When my grandfather, who was a Swiss immigrant that came over in 1905, he bought a batch of bricks. To this day, we're still using the bricks. If a cheese maker is crafting blue cheese, this is when they pierce it to introduce air so the mold can grow and promote interior veining. We've now arrived at Marika Gouda in Thorpe, Wisconsin, as well as at one of the most distinguishing stages in our cheesemaking story, the final step, known as finish and affinage. This is when Wisconsin cheesemakers honor a heritage of hands-on attention. Every day we pick our wheel, we flip it, we clean it with water and vinegar, and that happens with every single cheese, so there's a lot of hand labor involved. At this stage, the cheeses ripen in temperature and moisture controlled aging rooms. In the aging room, that's where all the magic happens. Fresh cheeses are ready soon after being made, while hard cheeses can take some time to ripen. That's why aging can range from several weeks to several years. Geduld is a schone zaak. Throughout the aging process, cheeses such as cheddar ripen from bacteria distributed throughout, while washed rind cheeses such as Wisconsin brick are surface ripened. Cheese makers scrub and brush these cheeses with salt, brine, molds, bacteria, or yeasts to develop complex and often pungent flavors from the outside in. Testing the milk and filling the vat, adding culture and rennet, cutting and cooking the curd, salting and forming, and finish and affinage. With these five steps, the best milk on the planet and more than 150 years of tradition, Wisconsin cheesemakers craft over 600 different types and varieties of cheese. They never stop striving to imagine, create, and recreate the greatest cheese in the world.